Okay everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make hydrophobic water. That's right, you heard me, water that repels water. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is spread out some fumed silica. Then I'm just gonna drop some water droplets on this. Now this is going to be my hydrophobic water droplet. Okay, now this is our hydrophobic water droplet here. Notice how I can just kind of knock it around. First of all, you'll notice it's not attracted to my finger at all. Now let's see what happens when we put other water around it. So this is just regular water here. But let's see if they can mix now. <laughs> Look, they just bump into each other. So even on non-hydrophobic surfaces, the water ball still just stays a little ball here. You can squish it, move it around as if it's a solid ball. Okay, so let's see if we can completely surround it with water drops. Whoa! <laughs> Look how crazy that is. It's water on water. Now in order to do this, what you need is a hydrophobic surface and some fumed silica. Okay, so what this does is when you put the regular water on the hydrophobic surface, it beads up. And so it doesn't have a lot of surface area below it. And what that allows it to do is it allows the water to roll over the fumed silica and pick it up. If you don't do it on a hydrophobic surface, then you won't be able to get the fumed silica under the droplet. So then once you have it on the droplet, then it can pick up the fumed silica and the fumed silica coats the outer membrane of the water droplet because the hydrophobic portion of the fumed silica is sticking outward and the hydrophilic end is sticking inward. So what you end up with is a drop of water that's hydrophobic. So notice how these can just bump into each other and they don't coalesce, they don't form one water droplet. But if you hit them together hard enough, then they do coalesce together. But watch what happens if I get them really small. So I'm cutting them here with my super hydrophobic knife. So let's take these two for example. Let's see if we can get them to combine together at all. So I can bump them into each other pretty hard and they won't pull together. So the smaller they are, the more they actually repel each other. So now what if I could cut these water droplets tinier and tinier and tinier and tinier and tinier and tinier until they became so small they were microscopic? Well then what would this look like? Well basically what we would have is just millions and billions of tiny little water droplets that are all staying repelled. So we would have something that's basically dry water. And I actually did this in a previous video. I showed you how to make dry water. All you do is you pour water in a blender with this fumed silica, turn it on, and the blender blends up the water, splashes it into little tiny droplets, and the droplets get covered in the fumed silica, and then they stay separate. So you get tiny microscopic drops of water. And what you end up with is an amazing thing called dry water. It's all liquid, but the liquid droplets are staying separate, just like these are doing here. 
And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.